on us. Um, but he didn't need to create anything. He's completely self-sufficient within himself. He doesn't need anything outside of himself. He's not coerced by anything outside of himself. He doesn't adhere to a law of goodness. No, his person defines what is good. He doesn't adhere to a law of justice. No, his person defines what is just. He is a law unto himself. And whoever is smoking weed out there, you guys are, whoever that is, you can't, you can't do that here. All right? Uh, I don't know, was that you out there smoking weed? Cause I, all right, because when we walked in, it smelled like it. Um, let me go out here just a second. Yeah, you were smoking? Oh, yeah, you smelled it, yeah. Yeah, I know, I smelled it as soon as this guy walked in. It was stinks. Um, just so you guys know, there, we, have a, we have a rule that we're going to be enforcing here, and that is that if anybody's caught smoking out here or smoking weed or drinking, then we're going to ask you guys to, to leave for a week because this is a church. And, and when, we, when people drive by and they see this, um, uh, it's, first off, it dishonors God. Uh, because, you know, uh, it's witchcraft. I'll tell you, the, the word for witchcraft in the Bible is pharmakia. It's where we get the word pharmaceuticals, pharmacy. Now, that doesn't mean medicine is witchcraft, because it, it's, it's, he all health comes from God. All healing comes from God. But witchcraft in Scripture, a biblical definition, is any mind-altering substance. That's why I don't drink coffee, caffeinated coffee, because I don't want any mind-altering substance, because demons proliferate in this environment. Meaning they excel, they can do their work easier. Easier. I don't even know if that's a word, <laughs> but they can do their work easier, um, and so they they have less hindrance when we when we when we willfully uh, participate in witchcraft, um, where we're giving the devil a very strong foothold in our life, uh, because God wants us to find our pleasure in 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 Him. He wants us to to f have our affections in Him and towards Him. And, and so, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I used to do drugs and alcohol. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody. God has delivered me from that, and it took years and a lot of backsliding and a lot of repentance and a lot of going to jail. And, and, and by the grace of God, he's delivered me from this stronghold of the enemy. And, and, I, and I pray that, that he delivers uh, you guys and my countrymen as well, because it's a, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. Um, so... You know, I just, I care about you guys. Uh, I, I, I deeply care about you guys. And I don't, you know, I don't want you to have any participation with unclean spirits. Um, <laughs> so, love is, and, and I know you guys, you guys probably didn't know that, that rule. I talked to them already. Um, but, but just so you guys know, and if you could tell the others, that you, your friends and stuff, uh, you know, the other people that come here, I would appreciate it, guys. Thank you. So, Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Envy is, Scripture says in James, it says, if you harbor selfish ambition and bitter envy, don't boast about it and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from your Father above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. So that's why you see these politicians that are, that are fighting in envy for this power and, and, and stuff, you know, the, the Illuminati and, and so forth. The, the, they, they, they hunger and thirst for blood and power and oil so much that, that they're, it's not enough for them to run a country. They want to be globalists like our presidents are. They're, 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 they're globalists. You know, Bush even said it. Obama said it. They're globalists. They're Illuminati. They're, 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 they're very sick, twisted individuals that... that, that um, that, that just are very spiritually sick. Um, when I was in Guatemala, since you guys like to hear my testimony, I'll tell you a little bit about Guatemala. There was a, uh, I was hired to extract this lawyer, this famous lawyer from New York, uh, at him and his family out of Guatemala, because uh, the local government was going to kill him. When I got there, 
I seen all these people walking around, these rich Americans and Europeans walking around holding little Guatemalan kids' hands. And I was like, hey, man, what's going on? You know, I, didn't, I don't like that stuff, right? And come to find out, what they do is they take these children and they scare it to death and they, they harvest its blood and they get high on it for months at a time. And that's what the politicians do. It's, uh, there's actual a name for that garbage. They actually have a name for it. I don't know. I can't remember. It starts with a C, I think. But, yeah, so pray for our politicians because... The, we all, scripture says to pray for those in authority over us because that way we can live godly, peaceful lives. And this pleases the Lord. It's always good to find out what pleases the Lord and do it. So, um, so it does not envy. Love does not envy. So envy is, is an inordinate, selfish desire, kind of like coveting, just like coveting. Uh, and it's idolatry at essence. At the fruit, it's, it's idolatry. It's to have an inordinate, selfish desire for. So, and, and God doesn't like idolatry because He is so ineffably. Ineffable means to, if I had 10,000 tongues, 10,000 languages, I spoke 10,000 languages, had 10,000 mouths, and, and lived 10,000 years, I couldn't completely articulate or, or comprehensively fully articulate uh, something. That's what ineffable means. So when I use that word, I want you guys to know what it means. Ineffable means it's undescribable, it's impossible to articulate. So envy um, is, like I said, it's idolatry. Um, it does not boast. Boast means to, you know, how many times do we do things in life where we're seeking others' approval? And we do things, we dress a certain way, uh, we, we learn this as an early age, this peer pressure and we want to conform to the pattern of this world and, and get human praise and human approval we even desired it I used to always desire my mom's approval probably because I never got it but um, and so this is this is boasting when we boast about something we're seeking approval of human beings and and this is not good it's scripture says that if you if you seek glory that comes from man or attention and praise that comes from man don't boast about it uh, no, it, it says if you if you how is it that you can believe if you seek glory that comes from man and not the glory that comes from God? So, in other words, if I'm seeking glory from other be of human beings, then or praise and approval from other human beings in an unhealthy manner, then that means that I don't believe in Jesus. So, um, love does not boast; it is not puffed up; it is not proud; it doesn't parade itself. So. Um, it does not dishonor others. Love doesn't dishonor others. Um, in other words, love speaks no evil. Uh, love doesn't doesn't talk bad about other people in a degrading manner or in a in a gossiping manner. Um, it is not self-seeking. So self-seeking again is idolatry. The the love of self, um, it, wanting. Uh, Wanting everything for myself. You know, you, you put a bunch of donuts out there and the guy comes over and grabs all of them except for one and walks out. <laughs> you know, that's self-seeking. So, um, <laughs> it is not easily angered. And see, the reason I want you guys to know these things about love is because God is love. So I want you to have an understanding of the God that we worship, the God that, we, that, that, that exists, the only God, the only living Lord God Almighty who alone abides in unapproachable light where there is no variation or shadow turning, who alone is wise, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ineffable majesty on high. And this is Jesus Christ. It is not easily angered. God is not easily angered. The word for anger in the Hebrew means to be long of nose, right? No, no, that, that's the, for, for long-suffering. To be long of nose. In other words, he, he, because anger, when you get angry, you breathe through your nose. So the Hebrews, the word that they use for anger is thumos in the Greek. Um, and where we get the word thermonuclear war. Um, and, and so God is not easily angered. He can be moved to anger, but he even says in scripture that, that wrath is his unusual act. He doesn't want to because he knows how he made us. He knows us more. He knows us better than any anybody else. I mean, he knows us perfectly, perfectly better than we know ourselves. And so, this is why he's not easily angered, because he he knows everything about us. He knows why we do what we do. We might not even know why we do certain things, but he does. And so he's easy. He's not easily angered. He's a, he doesn't get easily angered, and he keeps no records of wrongs. 
Now, this one is a difficult one for the con it, for the converted. He keeps no records of wrongs because the wrongs that we've committed have already been nailed to the cross and paid for, whereas the wrongs of the wicked hang over them, and 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 the unconverted, the wrongs of them. Yes, he does keep a record of those wrongs, and they 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 heap up for themselves wrath upon wrath in the day of judgment. And again, I'm going to speak on things that that are going to be uncomfortable sometimes. That's, and you know why? It's because I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to tell you the truth and honor God in doing this because I love and care for you. Scripture says that if you lie to somebody, you hate that person. So I'm not going to lie to you. And, and just like when you go to a doctor and the doctor